Hello, Pit Nation. Big J coming at you. Got a little fire going here in the chimney. Look at that. Woo! Today I'm going to be cooking some sausage, a ribeye. I uh, got some family coming over, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. It's so hot out here, I've got my little uh, umbrella over me in this one area because it's so damn hot. But we're going to be firing up the Weber kettle and uh, the slow and sear and kind of doing two-stage cooking. Again, we're going to do a ribeye and some sausages. I've got some hickory sausages. All this is from the old, uh, old Town Meat Market. And I've got two sausages that are green onion sausage that they make. So I'm really interested in trying that out. I've never, never had their green onion sausage. But uh, I do have some jalapeno sausage as well, but the family coming over doesn't like hot, hot, hot stuff. So <laughs> I'm cooking the hickory sausage today, but uh, got the good old cowboy hat on out here trying to get a little bit of shade, probably pop open a cold beer here in a minute because when it's super, super hot outside, there's nothing better than a cold beer. And I will be drinking a Shiner that's made in Texas. Not any of that, uh, that uh, tranny beer. So anyway, gonna have a little fun today. Appreciate y'all. Remember, smoke on. Hello, Pit Nation. Big Johnson coming at you on Big J's Pit Stop. Here we got an awesome ribeye. I got a wasp in my face. Got an awesome ribeye. I did uh, salt brine it, but only for about six hours, five hours. Uh, got some awesome sausages here. These two are um, green onion. Never had these before. This is all from, from Old Town Meat Market. And these are hickory mesquite peppered. So uh, those four right there. So anyway, and these are supposedly, have, I mean, you can see the green onion right there. They're packed with green onions. So I'm excited about trying those. Never had them before. Had all their other sausages. And we are cranking this to about 550. I've got it cracked just a little bit, trying to chill it down because that bad boy will rip up to 700 if you, if you don't uh, watch it. But I got those bad boys cranking. We'll do a little sear on it. Um, on the uh, ribeye and then uh, cook the sausages of course and everything else indirect after I uh, sear it so but let's get to searing it show you how to do it what we're gonna do with them I'm gonna go with a standard sear on the ribeye first oh these are hot all right get ready here we go all right we're gonna give that you know about a minute and a half or a minute Sometimes I'll get some flames kicking up when the grease starts dripping from the ribeye. I don't really do the uh, sausages until the very end. Really don't have any great, great flames coming up yet. But I decided to do a standard versus a, uh, like I said, let me... We'll just put this on just a second. And on a Weber, you always wanna have this over your protein side. This, unfortunately, goes over your fire side. You know, that way the smoke will come up and then come out, so. Or the smoke, will, the fire will hit the top of the dome, come across and then smoke out, so you will get smoke on your meat, but. Yeah, it's dropped quite a bit just from leaving that lid off that long. So, so like I said, I'm trying to not, you know, to go too crazy with it. And it's not really cranking a good sear because I don't have that fire opened up a lot. Just trying to, let's see if we've even got a sear on here. Yeah, we got a little bit of a sear. It's really just kind of burning the I'll check back with y'all in just a moment hello good nation big J coming at you all right I did cook this ribeye I seasoned it um, you know I did uh, a uh, salt brine and uh, 
put some seasoning on it, Big Mo's, uh, and kind of dressed it a little bit. Did pull it off, let it rest, put compound butter on it, uh, kind of make compound butter with garlic and things like that. But uh, let's give it a chop and, and uh, see how she's looking. So anyway, let's just do it like this. See how she turned out. Wow, look at that. Holy mackerel. That baby is just about perfect. Just about perfect. What say you? Is that how you like your steak? Kind of more a little less rare, kind of a little more. It's a very light, light medium. More on the medium rare. It's got a good line of pink in there. I don't know how well y'all can see it. Now it's not a bright pink, not like a medium rare. It's more of a less uh, rare steak, so to say. This is kind of the way my wife likes them. And uh, we will cut us off a little sliver, just a little one. And look at that, man. Ooh. Now this is not my normal butcher knife, my sharp, sharp butcher knife. But look at that. I mean, that is butter. And when I let mine rest, I do actually put butter on them. Oh my God. Oh my God. Woo! Woo! Oh man, the seasoning. It's unbelievable. Let's do a little wash down. A little shiner light blonde Texas beer. Oh my gosh, the flavor on that is unbelievable. Very, very good. So that was another home run. Now, this one was not the 30 day whiskey aged steak. So it was not that one. This one is just a regular ribeye that I dressed up. So I think it came out amazing, but I appreciate y'all so much. Remember, an unarmed nation is a very weak nation and we gotta keep smoking on. All right, we are back. You saw the uh, steak, the ribeye. Look at the sausage. On the end, the lighter ones are green onion stuffed and the other ones are hickory mesquite sausage. So let's cut a sausage. I did rinse the uh, cutting board off from the steak, so that way we can cut the sausage. These are huge sausages. And I do get all my meat at Old Town Meat Market. I have left their link. There's tons of videos on them. Uh, they are in uh, Copper Canyon or Double Oak officially but uh, they make all of these in house and I have not tried the chive or their green onions. So those are stuffed with actually green onions. So, but I'm gonna save those. I don't wanna cut that yet because I'm waiting for the guests to get here. But we'll cut this one here. Now what I do is I actually cook the sausage, you know, kind of indirect. And then I kind of put a little sear on them, little crispiness, not nothing major and plump them up. I don't really poke them, so I'm not poking them, letting any of the juice out. So you should see a ton of juice come pouring out of this thing because I don't stab them with my probe uh, to check internal temperature. You can kind of just tell. But then also what I do is I actually take, like if I'm gonna put barbecue sauce on it, and this is special barbecue sauce, but I actually put it on at the end so it's all completely cooked. I put a little sauce on it and then I glaze it meaning like put it back on the fire on indirect and just kind of let it soak in there. Um, and it kind of creates like a little glaze. That's what I do. Now on ribs, you can brush it on or you can pour it on, but you know, on ribs, just like this, you want to put your glaze on towards the end and then let it candy. That's what we call it, candied or glaze. Um, and it tends to kind of hold better and not all drip off. And you saw these were on for about another 10 minutes on indirect and none of it dripped off. It's actually just kind of hardened and glazed on there. So that's what I prefer. Now these are probably gonna be firecracker hot and see what I'm talking about the glaze, I wanna show you. 
See right here where the stuff is? Watch, when I put the knife in there, see how it just kind of pulls up? It's just glazed. So it's literally like a glaze, like a candy glaze. That's what you want it to be, or that's what I prefer it to be. I don't just like it all dripping all off. These are gonna be hot as a firecracker. I just took them off from glazing them. I don't have my really good butcher knives out right now. Oh yeah, these are, <laughs> These are not really that sharp, to be honest with you. Look at the juice. So see, when you don't poke them and prod on them, I'll go ahead and press this down. You'll actually contain all this juice. See it just dripping? Look, because I haven't broken the outer shell until cutting it. So that's what all this juice holds in there. If you start poking your pen in there and checking the temperature, you're gonna destroy the skin or the casing and all your stuff's gonna drip out. And then you'll have internal meat that's burnt. This is not burnt, look at it. I mean, you can tell it's perfect. But let's give it a try. Woo, it's hot. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh man, it's hot. Woo. <clears throat> Whoa, it's so good, but it is hot, <laughs> very hot. But that's how I do it. And it usually comes up perfect every time. I really can't wait to try the green onion, but I do have some guests coming over. So I did get a couple of those to try to see what I think about it. So I appreciate y'all as always. And remember Pit Nation, Smoke on.